Chandra sir? Yeah, thank you ma'am. Okay. Respected principal, below HOD, faculty members of our department and participants from various colleges, institutions, on behalf of organizing committee, warm welcome and good morning to one and all. I am Dr. A. Sendhil Kumar, Assistant Professor. It's my great pleasure to introduce our today resource person of this international webinar, Dr. Pius Bhaindara, postdoctoral researcher, University of Missouri, Columbia, on antimicrobial peptides and emerging class of therapeutic agents. With a few words of resource person, he did his BSc degree in GB Bant University, Uttaragand, MSc in School of Light Sciences, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, and PhD in CSAR Institute of Microbial Technology, Chandigarh, India, on the topic of molecular and genetic characterization of antimicrobial peptides produced by soil bacterial isolates. He also acted as visiting scholar for the project of antimicrobial recombinant peptides and lipopeptides production for treatment of nasocomial infections at Catholic University of Brasilia, Brazil, in laboratory of Professor Octavia Luis Franco. He had worked as a postdoctoral researcher in University of Arkansas for medical science, Little Rock, Little Rock Town, Arkansas, and National Center for Biological Sciences, Bangalore, India. Now he is working as a postdoctoral researcher at University of Missouri, Columbia. He has published more than 20 research papers in national and international reputed journals with the 7H index, 61 I10 index, and 225 citation index. He has completed the four major projects for various funding agencies. He has acted as reviewer for HIV and marine drugs, and acted as editor in antimicrobial resistance and chemotherapy. It is part of the journals practiced in microbiology. And he also reviewed three book chapters. Today is a very special day because all of us assembled in this webinar. Now I handed over the session to a research person to deliver his address. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandil Kumar. Now I invite our guest speaker, sir. Sir? Yes. Uh, ah, now the floor is handed over to you. Yeah, sure. So, is the screen is visible? No, yes, sir. sir. Ah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, ah, okay, sir. Let me start now. Okay, so the, uh, today I am going to deliver a talk on antimicrobial peptides and emerging class of therapeutic agents. So this work is related to my PhD thesis work also. So and I formulated this presentation for the basically for the students uh, who is developing their research work and who are in very early in their research career uh, with the giving of some of my research work introduction in this uh, webinar okay so let's start so what are the antimicrobial peptides so antimicrobial peptides are usually they are below 50 amino acids in size and they are cationic and empathetic in nature and if we see at the structure they are they are very diverse in their structural properties but usually they are alpha helical proline and arginine rich or disulfide bond rich alpha and beta structures they have and they produced by uh, usually by the induction or sometimes they are constitutively also produced and importantly they synthesized at the low metabolic cost and the reason for why they are uh, uh, synthesized at the low metabolic cost is we see in the next slide so why where are they so antimicrobial peptides actually antimicrobial peptides are present in every domain of life from bacteria to humans they present in fungi they present in bacteria they present in plants including humans and they present in all animals also and they are evident in vertebrates especially and uh, present in external mucosa the uh, they include organs like eyes mouth Genitourinary, skin, genitourinary organs, skins, lungs, and trachea. 
the basically the the organs or the the external mucosa where uh, we are connected or exposed to the external environment and the microbes there they also produced by immune cells like neutrophils and they also present in the intestinal tract of human and uh, uh, they are in the peanut cells are the source for the intestinal in the intestinal human tract for the antimicrobial peptides and what they do so the question is that what the work of antimicrobial peptide is there why they are there so antimicrobial peptides are basically host defense host defense peptides so they do functions as antifungal agents they do functions as antibacterial agents anti cancer agents or sometimes anti parasitic agents also or they have many more properties i just summarized in the few, uh, four points here and how they do their action so they usually kills the foreign org uh, organisms in the body or uh, they by permeabilizing the outer membrane of the bacteria so and uh, the inner membrane of bacteria by forming the channels in the membrane they do cell lysis they do some enzymatic reactions and they do cell wall destruction of the bacteria and uh, along with that they also do some immunomodulatory activities in the human body like cytokine production and all and they do stimulation of adhesion molecules for the expression also so in this slide i am coming to a different point actually but connecting with the earlier one the antimicrobial peptides so why the antimicrobial peptides are needed so if we see at the current very recent report that is published in last year by the center for uh, center for disease control and prevention usa they categorize the drug resistant bacteria in uh, uh, different categories especially urgent threats and serious threats we can see in the slide here they uh, they categorize many of the bacteria under these two categories and it means they indicate that the drug resistance is uh, in the bacteria is increasing day by day and that become a severe a severe uh, that needs a severe urgent care for uh, to reduce this uh, antibiotic drug resistance and because of this drug resistance there are millions of death uh, uh, counted or reported every year in the united states of america so there is a urgent need for novel alternative therapeutics and antimicrobial peptides are one of the suggested class of that we see next slide here so in this slide it has been uh, sh uh, it's it shown like as soon as this is a comparative scenario of uh, antimicrobial drug resistance and antibiotic introduction so if we see in the, this figure it is very clear that as soon as the new antibiotic introduced in the market or for the health uh, uh, health settings as soon as they introduce the drug resistant has been appeared or reported and if we see on the other hand the antimicrobial or antibiotic drug discovery so in the past few decades there are very very less new antibiotics introduced in the market so this all suggested that there is a urgent need for novel alternatives for antimicrobials and here in the present uh, talk we suggested antimicrobial peptides uh, for this alternative of uh, therapeutic agents so this is a very recent report published in uh, lancet a very uh, standard journal where they suggested alternative to antibiotics a pipeline portfolio and here we see in this uh, yellow box host defense peptides and peptides and innate defense peptides including anti viral film peptides or antimicrobial peptides they suggested as one of the option for alternative to conventional antibiotics so this uh, uh, further focused on the uh, on the importance of these antimicrobial peptides in the present talk the, actually i already told you in the earlier slide that antimicrobial peptides are present in every domain of life starting from bacteria to humans but today in the present talk i am focusing on antimicrobial peptides produced by bacteria as my phd work was focused on that because the field is very diverse so we are focusing on antimicrobial peptides produced by bacteria so this is yeah i just uh, make the full, uh, full screen so this is one uh, uh, report th where bacteriocin suggested as a viable alternative to antibiotics that published in nature reviews uh, by um, cotter et al so they suggested uh, bacteria as a alternative to conventional antibiotics 
Bactericins as an alternative to conventional antibiotics. And bactericins are the antimicrobial peptides produced by bacteria. They are also low molecular weight, usually 50 less than 50 amino acids in the size, and uh, cationic and amphipathic in nature. And if we see the database, uh, the Bactibase database is there for the bacterial and antimicrobial peptides specifically. And if we see, there are only around 300 bactericins known till date from the bacteria. And bacterial uh, po population of bacterial diversity is enormous, as we all know. We just know only 1 or 2 percent of bacterial population existed in the world till now. So there is much more potential to have novel antimicrobial peptides with novel mechanisms of action. Uh, as an alternative to conventional antibiotics. So if we see the antimicrobial peptides, so talk is now focused on antimicrobial peptides from bacteria. So the antimicrobial peptides from bacteria, they are multimodal and multifunctional. Here in this figure I presented here, they have multiple mechanism of actions in comparison to antibiotics. Antibiotics are very, sh uh, have very short -term targets for their action like some of the antibiotics are inhibiting DNA synthesis, some inhibiting cell wall synthesis, some inhibiting RNA synthesis like that. But the bacteriocines, they are multimodal or multifunctional. Uh, here I summarize them, like they may, they may form voltage dependent pores in the cell membrane or cell wall. They, uh, they may form the pores by the formation of lipid 2 docking. They may uh, inhibit the phospholipase A2, they can inhibit DNA gyrase, they can inhibition of uh, tRNA synthesis also, they may inhibit RNA polymerase and uh, they may inhibit even spore outgrowth, outgrowth also and they sometimes they uh, do the activation of autolytic enzymes also. So the very good example for this is the nicin. Nicin is the first antimicrobial peptide, a bactericin produced by lactobacillus lactis and uh, that is reported as first bactericin. And uh, this is the report about nicin, nicin published in Nature Reviews in 2006. And here we see nicin can kill their uh, target organism by different five different mechanisms. That is inhibition of cell wall biosynthesis, pore formation, inhibition of spore outgrowth, growth, inhibition of lipid second dependent, uh, uh, lipid second dependent pore formation, and activation of autolytic enzymes. Even after this, this report is a uh, bit late, uh, old, that is published in 2006. After that, many reports have been come with the nicin, like nicin has some antiparasitic activities and anti-cancer activities also, that I am going to show in the next slides. So this is all about the multimodal and multifunctional properties of bacterial antimicrobial peptides. So here we started and we conclude in this slide that uh, what are the advantage of bacteriocines over the conventional antibiotics? So the bacteriocines, if we summarize, bacteriocines have, they have in vitro potency, in vitro potency against uh, drug resistant bacteria. They have diverse activities with broad and narrow spectrum. They have diverse structures and mechanisms of action. They have low toxicity towards the host. They have in vivo potency against the pathogens. They are this is one interesting thing. They are amenable to bioengineering because they are peptides. They have amino acids and we can in bioengineer them easily. And importantly, they use more than one antimicrobial mechanism to kill their host. So this is the conclusion about the properties of antimicrobial peptides from the bacteria. And this slide is very interesting. This uh, uh, picture I took from my uh, PhD work. And uh, you see here, this is just starting actually when how I started uh, uh, the identification of antimicrobial peptides by bacteria. So in this slide this is uh, this is very uh, normal nutrient agar plate where we do the serial dilution of soil sample. I worked on soil sample bacteria to get these bacteriocines. So just uh, serial diluted soil sample and uh, spread over the plate and uh, just incubate it and after two or three days uh, we can see these tinny zones. You can see this easily, the tiny zones of inhibition means this colony that is in the center that is producing something that is inhibiting surrounding colonies. That is why it creates a surrounding tiny zone. So we just picked up this colony and start screening for the, the whatever it uh, producing the antimicrobial peptides or something else. So this is slide just I for a indication of information I just put this slide. So here I am just uh, introducing few of my research work onward. 
uh, of the antimicrobial peptide that I characterized in my PhD laboratory. So this is first uh, uh, peptide that is we named this as a panicin. And this report, this peptide, this paper has been published in Antimicrobial Agents and Chemotherapy in 2015. So in the first figure, so after uh, initial identification and uh, identification of the bacteria, we start uh, growing the bacteria on large scale to identification of the peptide, whether it really a peptide or uh, for the purification, what it is actually. So we did a combination of uh, several chromatographic techniques and out of that uh, HPLC and gel filtration chromatography are some. So I just put selected figures here. So this is the gel filtration chromatography chromatogram of the uh, 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 purified peptide. So see, we can see single peak here and on the basis of this, uh, we run some known samples also and we calculated the estimated molecular weight of this peptide that is turned out to be 5 kilo Dalton. And the same sample we run on the reverse page HPLC then and we did the silver staining also and we found the single band here and this is the single peak on HPLC. We collected this peak and submitted this peak sub simultaneously to uh, for the molecular weight analysis to the MALDI. And here we got the exact molecular weight of this peptide that is 4.94 kilo Dalton. And the second peak is there. So I will uh, let you know in the next slide why the second peak is there. So uh, the molecular weight of the peptide turned out to be 4.5 kilo Dalton. And to confirm that this is the band that is giving the activity, we did the in gel activity assay. There we cut uh, the, we did the SDS page gel and cut the one lane of gel and put it on the nutrient agar plate and overlay it with the indicator strain and uh, on the other day on the second next day we see that this zone of inhibition that developed around this band so this is ha this has been confirmed that this is the band this is the peptide which is giving activity and uh, that is how it confirmed that this is the antimicrobial peptide we are characterizing and here we use nicene here as a control so in the next slide uh, see, so this slide is Again important, we did the whole genome sequencing of that bacteria, the producing bacteria, who is producing penicillin, that was penibacillus actually. So we did whole genome sequencing and uh, after whole genome sequence and anal analysis, we fish out the biosynthetic gene cluster for this peptide. And how we did that, actually this peptide, the, uh, the peptides uh, produced by the bacteria, they have some conserved genes around them. So here in this figure, this is the biosynthetic gene cluster figure. So this is the antimicrobial peptide uh, uh, reported in our study. And these all are the conjured, conjured enzymes or genes along with that. So these are very conjured. So these sequences are known. By using these sequences, we did the uh, blast analysis and we can find out them in the genome. They are, they are at multiple places. Then we did further analysis and we find out the, the complete cluster. So this is how we did the bioinformatic analysis from the whole genome sequencing and we find out this cluster, gene cluster. So and out of this gene cluster we deduce the peptide sequence also and this is the peptide sequence. Uh, here is a cleavage site. Actually these peptides have some leader sequences with them that is uh, cleaved off uh, during the secretion of the active peptide. So this peptide uh, penicillin A2, this one. Actually, this gene is present in duplication. That is why this is A1 and A2 and our uh, characterized one is A2. So here we see 7 cysteine molecules are there. And uh, actually, this peptide, the penicillin, is a class of antimicrobial peptides, bacteriocin, that is called as lantibiotic. So lantibiotics are one type of bacteriocins. Those have uh, some circular post-translational modifications. So uh, they have, uh, those are named as lanthionine or methyl lanthionine rings. So in which what happened, the cysteine is uh, the nearby serine on threonine molecule is dehydrated and cysteine is going to be circularized with them and forming the chains and making it more complex. So uh, this is how these cysteines are playing role in that uh, secondary structure formation. And what happens during the MALDI, the first cysteine is here. So this cysteine is uh, somehow circularized with the other serine and threonine molecules. We can see multiple serine and threonine molecules are here. So these first eight amino acids somehow getting cleaved during the MALDI. That is why it gives two peaks here. So you see in MALDI, the first eight amino acids removed. So it becomes 3.7 kilodalton peak 
and when the intact one is there that is 4.5 kilodalton so that is why it was giving two peaks so this is the biosynthetic gene cluster characterization for the penicillin and uh, when we reported uh, this penicillin at that time this was the largest lentibiotic known even till date the penicillin is the uh, largest lentibiotic known so in the next uh, we did uh, the uh, characterization of its bioactivities so we did the MIC assay and found that penicillin is a broad spectrum lentibiotic that kills both gram positive and gram negative bacteria so here we use the specific set of gram positive and gram negative bacteria including e coli vibrio and pseudomonas as a gram negative and s aureus bacillus and listeria uh, listeria monocytogenes as a uh, gram positive indicator strains so and uh, then after characterization of mic we did we try to find out the mechanism of action like how they this penicillin is killing the bacteria so we used e coli as indicator strain strain and we did uh, transmission electron microscopy and this is the uh, uh, sections of uh, sections and this is the whole bacteria and this is after sectioning of the bacteria and we can see here we can compare these two this is control and this is the treated one we see the uh, rupture or the deformation of cell membrane is there we can easily see that so penicillin does the cell membrane alterations to kill the bacteria this is one of the killing mechanism of penicillin there may be several others that we don't know but uh, but penicillin is definitely that is sure that penicillin is uh, penicillin does the cell membrane alter, cell membrane alterations and the same thing we just uh, confirmed by the another way uh, by doing the fluorescence microscopy we treated the bacteria with the penicillin and then uh, did the staining with propidium iodide that is propidium iodide is known to be go inside when the membrane pores are present in the uh, cell membrane so penicillin form the pores on the uh, on the cell, uh, cell membrane of uh, e coli and that is how propidium iodide went inside and uh, combined to the dna and, and give the fluorescence there so this is how we confirmed the uh, mechanism of action of penicillin and in this figure side by side we confirm that whether this penicillin is cytotoxic for the uh, mammalian cells or not because if we going to use them uh, further as a therapeutic agent uh, definitely we need to check their cytotoxicity also here by using the hela rwpe and raw cells those are three different origin cell lines to confirm this uh, cytotoxicity and we found that penicillin has very uh, minimal level of cytotoxicity uh, means penicillin is non cytotoxic and have a good efficient antimicrobial activities and the next we went further and we checked this uh, efficacy of penicillin in in vivo system using the uh, methicillin drug resistant bacteria so this is the uh, the figure where we determined the mic values or the uh, did the killing kinetics of penicillin against mrsa in uh, uh, three different concentration that is 4 8 and 20 micromolar concentration and we found it very effective at the four mic even at the four micromolar eight micromolar concentration and then we compare the activity of penicillin with the known antimicrobials known antimicrobials that include nicin ampicillin chloramphenicol or streptomycin and we found that penicillin is very effective against the mrsa in comparison to known antimicrobials then we used the same mrsa in the thigh infection another example of another peptide that i have characterized in my uh, phd work and uh, i i took i choose this peptide i characterized uh, several peptides during my phd thesis but i choose these two because of some reason so the peptide i presented penicillin penicillin uh, is a lentibiotic that has some post translational modifications and this peptide lateroesporulin that i characterized this peptide don't have any post translational modifications this peptide only have disulfide bonds here you can see this peptide i am not repeating the purification slides that i presented already for the penicillin those are like similar type of things i am uh, focusing on the different points so see if we see here lateroesporulin 10 this also has cysteine molecules 1 2 3 4 5 6 cysteines this has and penicillin was having seven cysteine molecules but the penicillin having post transitional modification and the penicillin has lanthionine and methyl lanthionine rings because that was a lentibiotic and this peptide 
is a is not a lentibiotic this is a normal bactericin because it don't have any post transcendental modification or the conserved enzymes it don't have any so uh, okay this peptide don't have conserved enzymes so how we identified this from the whole genome sequence so that was very interesting thing uh, during this di discovery we did the whole genome sequencing for this bacteria also and uh, we did the end terminal sequencing actually for the with the purified peptide where we found the initial initial four five amino acids on the basis of that we did the blast search and we found this peptide and that was a tricky job that took a lot of time for us because that was the first time we are characterizing this peptide in our laboratory and uh, the interesting thing is that with the ls10 there was another peptide that is uh, gi9 or lateral we named them lateral that was already characterized in uh, my uh, my phd lab by my senior and the lower line was the sequence for that lateral and the upper one is for lateral 10 that is my peptide so if we see carefully both of these peptides have 16 molecules at conjured sequences but still amino acid sequence similarity is only 55 percent so initially i was thinking to drop down this peptide because this is like very similar and uh, why we should proceed with that but later when we characterize the molecular weight actually this all uh, uh, gene syn biosynthetic gene cluster and all that comes later but in very initially when this uh, bacteria turn out to be brevibacillus lateralis as the producing strain and peptide in the first instance it looks like it was very similar but uh, i proceeded with this one and uh, we got very interesting results and we got two papers out of this peptide yet so what happens this peptide the first thing is that the lateralis that is already characterized was a broad spectrum peptide that kills both gram positive and gram negative but my peptide that is ls10 that kills specifically only gram positive bacteria so that was first difference that uh, even before this biosynthetic gene cluster underweight that was indicating that yes something is different there so later we got the biosynthetic gene cluster and we got there only 55 percent similarity with the earlier one that uh, we and then we are more sure to and interested to do further research on this peptide then we proceed it proceed this peptide further and uh, then i uh, estimated the mic values for this peptide and here it's very clear that this peptide is uh, specifically killing gram positive bacteria only and uh, for the molecular mechanism of the killing we i establish uh, another system we determined the amount of atp after treatment of this peptide and we found that this peptide is disrupt the atp pool of bacteria in bacteria the atp pools are uh, resided on the bacterial membrane that is small tiny structures called mesosomes where the atp pool is there in the bacteria and these peptides they disrupt the bacterial membrane cell membrane that is how uh, they if they disrupt the bacterial cell membrane they disrupt the atp pool also and we confirmed it here in another way by uh, by determining the atp amount and we found that this uh, lateralis 10 disrupting the atp pool that is another mechanism of action for this one and side by side we confirmed the hemolysis we did the hemolysis assay with lateralis 10 we also did the cell culture assay to check the cytotoxicity but we also did the hemolysis assay by using the uh, uh, rabbit RBCs to check whether this peptide is able to do hemolysis or not and we found that even uh, at the uh, the MIC values of this peptide is uh, one uh, around 5 micromolar and we see even up to 100 micromolar of concentration the hemolysis is not went up to more than 20 percent so this peptide is basically known hemolytic peptide in the MIC ranges and can be used uh, as a therapeutic agents for further applications so here i'm going to back to the uh, earlier slide so interesting thing here is that this peptide has 616 molecules and we all know the human defenses the hey! human defenses human host peptides they are human host defense peptides they are also having 616 molecules so here i was thinking uh, uh, i checked the literature and found there are no defenses and check this peptide against uh, human uh, uh, pathogen mtb s37 and we found that this peptide is 
is found effective against MTB in uh, 0.5 micromolar ranges and that was very uh, efficient, efficient killing against MTB and uh, we also uh, did the intracellular uh, intracellular infection assay to check the effectivity of this peptide there we infected raw cells raw macrophages with this uh, with MTBS 37 pathogenic strain and after the infection we give the treatment with the laterosporulin and found that laterosporulin was able to kill the intracellularly residing MTB bacteria and uh, so this is how we uh, confirmed that we find out a new anti-MTB peptide that is produced by bacteria and to, uh, to confirm it further or to get the more interested, uh, interesting results we did a heat map analysis with rifampicin. Rifampicin is frontline drug against MTB. So we were uh, we were enthusiastic to check whether this laterosporulin 10 able to lower down the MIC values of rifampicin, rifampicin or laterosporulin itself if uh, we use it along with the rifampicin. We did the heat map analysis and we found that laterosporulin 10 was able to reduce the MIC values of rifampicin several folds and the effect was uh, calculated as synergistic effect. So uh, this is how we uh, find out a novel peptide letters followed in 10 that has potential anti MTB activities. So uh, further again to determine uh, the molecular mechanism of action of this uh, letters followed in 10 we did the ATP assay and ATP assay and here we included two more assays NADPH or NADH so basically all three are energy pool of bacteria and we found that electrosporulin 10 was able to disrupt the whole dinucle dinucleotide pool of the bacteria and able to disrupt all energy pool of bacteria and that is how it killed the bacteria and here we again we did the scan electron microscopy or transmission electron microscopy so this is s aureus and we can see here and uh, this is the uh, first line is for control this is mtb this is s aureus and this is again mtb in uh, this is transmission electron microscopy and these first two lines are the scanning electron microscopy so we see here for the treatment at two different time points that is uh, 30 minutes or one hour time point see how in comparison to control we can see easily that cell how cell membrane disrupted and bacteria whole bacteria body disintegrated after laterosporulin 10 treatment so this is how we determined the mechanism of action for the laterosporulin 10 so further next the, so and this this story was published in uh, microbiology 2016 the laterosporulin 10 so further as uh, I told you this, I suspected this laterosporulin 10 as defensin like peptide and that is why I, I proceeded for the anti-MTB activity and found interesting results there. Then I thought uh, if uh, it, uh, it functions against MTB and uh, we suppose or we suspected it as a defensin like molecule or the peptide, so why shouldn't we test it against uh, cancer cell lines because defensins are known to be act against cancer cell lines also. So I, I checked that and interestingly we found uh, results that the laterosporulin 10 is a broad spectrum anti-cancer molecule also. We here is showing only two cell lines but we checked six seven different cell lines and uh, we found laterosporulin 10 very effective against the cancer cell lines. And uh, this is the LDH release assay experiment where LDH is released upon treatment of laterosporulin 10 and that is indication of cell membrane rupture. So it is, has been confirmed that laterosporulin is ruptured the cell membrane of the cancer cells and that is how they kill them and same we confirm, uh, we have further confirmed with the uh, scanning electron microscopy. So here we used HELA and MCF cell and this is RWPE cell. Here also we used RWPE cell as a control because RWPE is a normal human prostate, can, uh, normal human prostate epithelium cell line. So here, here also we see there is no LDH release in normal cells upon treatment of laterosporulin 10 means it is not toxic towards the normal cells and here in scanning electron microscopy again confirmed that normal cells are not affected upon treatment of laterosporulin 10. Uh, uh, yeah. Ah, it's okay. It's okay. Ah, yes. okay so I need to repeat the slide again. So 
Frankly, breaking, sir. Occasionally, your voice. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, uh, this, yes, sir, this, it's okay. This yes, is your about is the your phone is properties of letter of four in ten. No. Okay. Yes. So here we check three different cell lines against uh, uh, to check the antecedent properties of letter of four in ten, including one normal cell line. That is the normal human prostate epithelium cell lines, and we see that upon treatment of letters for in ten in normal cell, that is RWPE, no LDH leakage is there, and also no changes in cell surface. That means letters for in ten is non-cytotoxic towards the normal cells, while it is cytotoxic against the cancer cells, uh, where the uh, loss of microvilli is, uh, is significantly. We can see the loss of microvilli. In the cancer cells and uh, cell surface become smooth even at the treatment of 5 micromolar concentration of letrosporulin 10. So we confirmed letrosporulin 10 as a potential anti-cancer peptide, and uh, we published this study also in scientific reports in 2017. So for the anti-cancer things, I further interested in the anti-cancer properties of antimicrobial peptides, and uh, recently in this year only I published a review. In biochemy about the antimicrobial peptides and their anti-cancer activities, and there I summarized around 100 bacterially produced molecules, including number of antimicrobial peptides of different classes, uh, which have the anti-cancer properties. And this is one uh, mechanism of action figure for these peptides. The mechanisms involved by uh, by uh, that they pep these peptides used are the necrosis. Or the they sometimes they do transcription inhibition in cancer cells. They do DNA strain breakage and damage. They create endoplasmic reticulum stress also. They activate the caspase uh, caspase cascade, and uh, that is why they do the ap apoptosis also in cancer cells. They disrupt the mitochondrial membrane potential, and they also do the cell cycle arrest by splicing inhibition. And uh, in in result, like these antimicrobial peptides are. They are potential anti-cancer agents, so that we can use for the therapeutic agents. So this is the another slide from the same paper, where uh, I I summarize the mechanisms further again or how we can use these antimicrobial peptides against uh, cancer cells. So these uh, peptides they do anti-tumor immune activation. They activate the immune cells. Uh, for the anti-cancer properties, uh, they they can be used as they can be delivered as vector to the cancer cells. They can be used as uh, siRNA or RNA interference molecules. They can be these anti-cancer bacteria. The producing bacteria we can directly introduce the antimicrobial peptide producing bacteria to the cancer cells where they do these uh, production of these uh, antimicrobial peptides and kill the cancer cells. And we can use them as a intravenous injection also, and uh, direct injection also. These all are the different procedures where we can use anti-cancer bacteria or antimicrobial peptide producing bacteria for the anti-cancer activities. So here uh, I am concluding uh, my presentation, uh, the uh, today's presentation uh, with the the four uh, lines, four things like AMPs are multifunctional peptides, as we see. They are uh, antimicrobial in nature. They are antifungal. They are anti-cancerous and they are anti-parasitic. Also, so these peptides are having wide spectrum biological activities, and based on natural AMPs, as they are uh, peptidic in nature, they can be bioengineered further, or they can be developed for their synthetic analogs for the further therapeutic applications. And interestingly, these peptides can be developed as probiotic antibiotics also, as uh, they can be used as a probiotic strain or where they can produce the antibiotic peptides in the gut and uh, have some therapeutic applications there. So this can be total. These peptides are the potential future therapeutics. So this is all about presentation. So thank you all for listeners. Here I I also want to introduce. 
so this is my website i have my own website where all my publications are available and all my details are there students are go students can go there and see my publication and all things and connect me everywhere i am available on all social media and all and also i recently i am uh, involved in writing also other than scientific writing i involved in non scientific writing also so i recently published my novel rani khet express the love track so if you are interested you can go and check my profile on my website and look at my book also thank you hello yes hello uh, sir your yeah. <coughs> your presentation is very vivid and clear <coughs> It's very interesting to know that uh, bacteriscence like uh, uh, penicillins and latirosporulins discovered by you, which possess very effective antimicrobial, cytotoxic, and anti-tuberculosis, and even anti-cancer properties. The discovery of antimicrobial drug is uh, very much uh, needed uh, at the global level. Sir, uh, uh, shall we open the session? Sure. Uh, yeah, dear participants. you can switch on your mics your microphones now the session is open for discussion if you have any doubts and any questions you can ask now you are welcome so i have my own questions sir sure uh, sir actually i'm working on odonates dragon flies mm mm-hmm. Uh, in the dragonfly uh, hemo lymph, actually, I have collected. Uh, uh, I have collected the serum. I mean, the from the hemo site, from the hemo lymph, and I have tested for its antimicrobial properties, and we found that it was effective against all the common antibiotics, even the fourth generation antibiotics. Mm-hmm. It's really very effective. but the method what we did is uh, of course a crude method we didn't go for uh, purification and other things uh, but is it possible to do it in uh, hemolymph of an insect yeah it is possible but it's real real effect actually from the hemolymph there are many antimicrobial peptides are known you can visit the antimicrobial yes, peptide sir. database antimicrobial peptide database so there you can specifically find out the antimicrobial peptide produced by hemo lymph and there you can find out the citations also like how other people proceed with the hemo lymph to get the peptides because every peptide is different every peptide properties is different and interestingly as they are novel we need to have a different set of uh, purification combination uh, techniques for different peptides but the references you will find there that will be really helpful to you yes but uh, i thought uh, uh, on economic basis it is very expensive no sir rather than doing in bacteria no no it is not expensive you can see like uh, uh, once you you already collecting the hemolymph you told me yes sir yes sir so if you have already the hemolymph the procedures for the purification all they are same like even bacteria you can read my papers also like how i did i simply uh, there are two three main methods like gel filtration chromatography and uh, hplc is later before gel filtration chromatography um uh, one uh, ammonium sulfate precipitation procedure is there fine so and two three more but these ammonium sulfate precipitation and gel filtration chromatography is the major and gel filtration chromatography is it is also like not so like you have to have a machine and all you can simply have some gel filtration beads like cefadex 25 cefadex 50 beads are loosely available also and you can have manual columns and manual pump fine there you can okay, sir. you can use uh, these columns like actually i did in my lab there was a machine was there for the gel filtration but i used manual system to purify these peptides because in machine okay. it's, it's little bit difficult and if you have the novel things it's uh, i was i was feeling like manual thing is uh, more suitable to me and i was able to purify five six peptides easily so okay. so it's actually not, i worked on uh, I, I have to, we have taken the microbes. I mean pathogens from the meat meat samples. Mm-hmm. Okay. From the meat samples, we have isolated the uh, 
चैनल्स और uh the if the bacteria has the cell wall sometimes they do the cell wall inhibition also so nisin nisin actually have all of these mechanism of action already has been uh, discovered okay sir so, uh, so further suppose uh, if it affects the cell post means uh, won't it affect the uh, normal cells of the other animals uh, suppose uh, if you are using that against a certain type of bacteria uh, as a, a drug Can it uh, kill that uh, cells by affecting the uh, pores of the uh, cell membrane? So I'm the host cell membrane. So, so your question is that like they can affect the host cells also, like right? Ah uh, yeah yeah host cells yeah. Yes. So what happens? Uh, these bacteria. Uh, first of all, these are cationic peptides usually, and the bacterial cell membrane is usually. and ionic so that is why with the bacteria they do easily uh, uh easily attack on bacterial cell membrane and kill them and uh, as as far as my knowledge they have already been like many of the peptides they have been checked against the uh, in, in the cell culture system against different cell lines different origin of cell lines and they don't found any cytotoxic effects even some of them find the cytotoxic properties also but most of them are not and if we talk about nicin nicin has already been used in many in vivo systems also and it don't have any cytotoxic effect and the second thing is that nicin is produced by lactobacillus lactis and uh, that is the bacteria that present in our gut system also fine so it's already a gut bacteria and nicin is produced as a probiotic also there uh, probiotically produced by a bacteria and it it actually don't have the cytotoxic effect but further if we further explore it depends in the gut it is not cytotoxic but if sometimes like if we take the nicin as a as orally fine orally means it will directly again go to the gut there is no cytotoxic effect but if we use nicin for a intravenous injection in the blood it may be cytotoxic there so studies are going on for that and but nicin is a very well established peptide that is used as a food preservative since years have you better than the your product sir uh pardon me <coughs> have you patented your product no it's not patented uh, actually the, uh, uh, for the patent there are so many things are there we tried for the penicillin for the patent but these peptides usually they are penicillin is around uh, penicillin is 43 amino acid long and letrosporulin 10 is 54 amino acid sir you have no no as no as you know the gene sequence you could produce it uh, artificially you know yes we can produce it but the thing is that for the uh, therapeutic application peptide as much as uh, shorter is the peptide it will be good because if the peptide is long oh. the chances of uh, cytotoxicity and all are uh, there in the in vivo system so this is how i mentioned in one of the slide the synthetic analogs can be produced so what happens the pharma pharma companies using these peptides basic sequences and uh, produce their analogs like the what what will be the effective analog of that peptide the in the short sequences and those can be used as therapeutic agents directly So one more question, uh, sir. Uh, you have told that uh, uh, it is effective on cancer cell lines. Mm -hmm. Cancer, cancer cells affect cells. Um, have you ever uh, gone for any clinical trials using these uh, peptides? Uh, 
I strongly believe that this is a really wonderful event which is going to be a one more uh, golden feather in the crown of our region uh, research department of zoology chicken and agriculture hero on behalf of the department and myself i express my sincere thanks to our uh, respected principal dr g uday kumar for having given me an opportunity to conduct the webinar this is the critical time really for our college as the first internal examination is uh, uh, gaining its momentum already in spite of that uh, he didn't reveal a little murmur about the postponement of the program and continued his uh, consistent of support for our program uh, uh, yeah uh, a big salute is i extend my heartfelt thanks to our beloved head of the department dr yeah rani prabha for her motivation and uh, kind guidance in the smooth conductance of the webinar <coughs> i am also very grateful to our uh, chief uh, guest speaker dr pish bhaindra post doctoral research uh, associate university of missouri columbia for his uh, excellent presentation and uh, nice explanations for all the questions mm. raised uh, he is not only a distinguished researcher but also a nice and a compassionate person uh, he admitted our uh, request to deliver a speech on uh, one of his research team for our students immediately he said yes wholeheartedly without a second thought how much busy he is even though he has uh, accepted our invitation and has given an uh, excellent talk on the antimicrobial peptides as uh, novel therapeutic agents that's up to you sir thank you i am much obliged to dr e s indil kumar for his uh, consistent effort and uh, technical assistance for the webinar and i am also very grateful to our uh, organizing committee members dr e m prabhu and dr k saraswati who dedicated themselves in shaping the event in come up with flying colors I felt so much happy in extending my warm thanks to all the professors of neighboring colleges, research scholars, and students for participating in the webinar. With this, we conclude this uh, session nicely. Soon we are to meet again in our uh, next webinar. Thank you. And uh, one more request: uh, can you in the feedback form and submit your points? Uh, the link is uh, floated in the comment section. Please uh, follow it. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, with this. With this, we close the webinar. And dear participants, thank you so much. And uh, special thanks, my heartfelt gratitude to the guest speaker for your beautiful and uh, very explanatory talk. And uh, all delegates, please take care of yourself. Though government has relaxed certain norms, you please take care, wear the mask, and be safe. And with this, the international webinar on antimicrobial 